Hello, I'm Jennifer Babcock Coleman, and like you, I'm wild about Washington. People who live on the edges of Spokane sometimes find unexpected guests on their property. Some of those guests can be very large and not something you'd want to deal with yourself. Well, one of the, one of the largest guests that, that visit homeowners in the Spokane area are the, the local moose population. Um, individuals show up for a variety of reasons at uh, different times of the year primarily in starting in, in late spring and continuing into early fall. Most of these animals early in the spring are yearlings that have yearling moose that have been kicked out by mom when she's getting ready to have her calves. They're, they're a little lost and they wander around and sooner or later they wind up visiting in somebody's yard. When that happens, depending upon the location, the homeowners call us and we go out and have to decide, well, is this moose a potential problem to the landowner or is it a potential threat to public safety? If we decide the answers are yes to either of those questions, then we, we react by having to immobilize the moose and moving it to a place where um, it's, it's a little more suitable for moose to be. You, you, you need to respect moose. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of different situations where where uh, people get really excited, uh, almost panicky, when, when they're in the presence of a moose. And, and it's actually, at times, easier to predict the moose's behavior than, than, than the people that are, that are nearby. And it's really important that these people remain calm and respect the, the, the distance for the animal, not approach it, not attempt to feed it, certainly not attempt to pet it. Uh, there, there have been cases where where moose have been fed repeatedly. When that happens, they, they lose their fear of people. And, and then you've got the mix where folks will actually try to approach the animal, either to have their picture taken, uh, I mean, is in a zoo situation, and, and they find out that that's really not a good thing to do. Um, we haven't had anybody hurt here in the Spokane area, but we've been lucky. Uh, we've worked hard to get the word out that, that it's important not to feed them and not to approach them but it certainly has occurred. The fall weather might be upon us, but it's certainly no reason to put away your fishing equipment. In fact, this might be one of the best times to catch a Puget Sound salmon. Jennifer, you're right. This is a good time of year to catch coho in South Puget Sound. Each spring, the Department of Fish and Wildlife releases 1.8 million coho into South Puget Sound. The fish come into the hatchery, usually in February, and get released in May and June. They'll stay in the Puget Sound for a short time, and then they'll migrate out to the ocean. The fish that we release in June are usually going to remain in Puget Sound as a delayed release and those fish will be available to fly fishermen to fish for resident coho in the winter and the spring. As the adults mature in the ocean and they return after a year and a half, they begin to mill around Peel Passage by the net pins from where they're released near Harstein Island. These fish are very available for recreational harvest and there's a variety of ways in which to catch them. Cut plug herrings, flashers and spoons, and spinners. Gear as little as a spinning rod and lure fishing from the shore can catch these coho. Many people will sight fish for these fish. That is, they'll locate fish that are jumping and then cast to them and then do a slow retrieve back to their boat. This is a very effective way to fish the coho. So if you're interested in catching coho in South Puget Sound, now is the time to do it.
One of the good things about this fishery is that you don't need a boat and a lot of expensive gear to actually harvest these coho. You can fish from the bank, you can use a spinning reel and a lure and cast to where these fish are migrating through your waters. So it's a pretty inexpensive way to catch some really nice quality fish. Again this year, the agency took the fun of fishing to the Puyallup Fair. For many kids, it's their first introduction into this activity. This tradition has become a big hit of the Puyallup Fair. Well, we're here at the Puyallup Fair uh, at the trout pond, affectionately known as Lake Bonnie Long, uh, due to her efforts in really making all of this happen. Bonnie's been working with the folks from the fair for several years on this. This is the fourth year we've done the trout pond. Uh, some people said it would never work. Uh, catch and release trout fishing isn't going to work in a venue like this. And of course, you don't have to hang around here very long to realize that it works just fine. It's all about getting kids fishing, many of them for the first time. We've got a lot of young youngsters here. Uh, some of them have fished before. Some of them have never even seen a fish before. But they all go away happy and they all go away anglers. That's really what it's all about. Well, the interesting part about a thing like this, almost any time you have a kids fishing event, is that the parents learn as much about it as the kids do. A lot of times the parents go away as excited and happy with what happened as the kids are. Because the whole family tends to get hooked on fishing. They understand some of the basic rules about fishing. They find out in a hurry some of the really basic information they need to know. Sometimes parents are a little bit overwhelmed and intimidated by getting started at something like this. So we not only get the kids excited about fishing, we give the parents some information they can take home and use later. We give them a kids fishing booklet that they can thumb through at their leisure. And uh, we like to think we're, we're turning a lot of families into fishing families. They're getting a chance to fish, they're getting a chance to learn about the outdoors and about wildlife in general. We've got our, our bear and cougar folks here talking about what they do and, and, and what's going on out, out in the woods with wildlife and wildlife habitat. Lots of people come up and say, well, I like to fish, but how much does it cost? Well, it, you know, as is always the case for taking kids fishing, it doesn't cost anything. Kids don't have to buy a license. Uh, the parents get to take it easy. They get to turn the kids over to some folks who know how to fish, know what to do, know how to help them. Uh, everybody has a good time. Mom, dad, grandma, and grandpa get to rest their feet for a few minutes. Everybody goes away happy. Lots of the kids come back more than once. <laughs> some of them have been here for two and three years in a row, and some of them are standing here waiting, even, even when it's raining, to get out and, and go out and get a chance to wet a line. Some people, I'm starting to think, they come to the Puyallup Fair to go fishing, and maybe it's the only time of the year they do it, but we sure make it easy for them to do it that way, and that's fine with us. Washington State has one of the best public access programs in the nation, which allows us to use so many of our waterways for recreation. It is one of the best because we have the most of them. The supervisor takes a personal interest in our public's needs, and we are building a network of citizen volunteers that are making a big difference. We have volunteered to adopt this site for the Fish uh, and Wildlife Department. We're picking up litter, uh, usually using young people in the community. I think the kids would say, and I certainly would agree, that uh, maintaining something uh, gives them a good work ethic, for one, and it gives a, a presentable site to the community that uh, everybody can be proud of. And the neighborhood needs to own its own boat launch. I would say any other group that's uh, thinking about adopting a site, be sure to uh, 
uh, utilize the young people, the community, the children in particular, and their parents, because families working together, I think it helps them stay together and it makes them proud of where they live. The way to find out more about the Adopt and Access program is to contact one of our one of six regional offices statewide or you can find out about the program online at www.wdfw.wa.gov. Uh, without the help of the volunteers, our recreational opportunities uh, would be uh, greatly diminished and we really appreciate their help. Before leaving you, here's where you can see Washington's wildlife during the next few weeks. This has been Wild About Washington, brought to you by the employees of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Working together, we can save Washington's outdoor heritage for future generations. Thank you for watching, and please join us again.